Now I'd like to apologise if this seems a little jumpy to you. This is my FT200 walk around, so it's going to be a bit jumpy, um, but that's just the way it is. There is the, the FT200 radio, um, as you can see it's an SSB transceiver 1975, um, it's got a function switch for mode, uh, RF gain uh, which is volume and RF gain. Uh, you have the um, clarifier control, the plate and load, the microphone and the grid control and you also have the operator switch. Be just before that is the band switch and the 10 meter band switch, the calibrator knob. Um, just moving over now to the VFO, the, this here is with the, just the, the tuning knob on uh, another tuner is the remote VFO. A remote VFO is made for cross what they call split operation. That means to transmit on one frequency and to receive on another to create something called duplex. That's transmitting on one frequency receiving on another. If you want to transmit on one frequency and receive on that one frequency that is known as simplex. Um, the tuner on the top there is known as the VersaTuner 2. It's an American uh, tuner matcher made by MFJ Incorporated. Affectionately known as made from junk. A number of these leave the factory with faults on them like the bulbs blowing or wires not soldered. Um, the quality control is much to be desired. Uh, when I had this one the bulb would get bright as I tuned up the radio and there was a capacitor fitted across the bulb that was to prevent that from happening and it was only soldered on one side so I had to go in and resolder it. Um, it had been twisted around the lug but not soldered. The unit here I just want to start is the speaker. This is the FP200 speaker unit. Uh, this speaker unit has the speaker and also the power supply that does all the voltages for the radio um, so that you can um, operate it from the mains. Uh, this power supply unit is uh, gives out 600 volt, 150 volts, uh, 350 volts and 12 volt for the heaters for the valves. Uh, I'm just going to go around the back and show you a little bit about um, what it looks like. So what we're going to do is give you a little look at the cabinet. The cabinet is covered in this sort of paint. It's um, a sort of a metal paint which is, it sort of looks all lumpy. Um, it wasn't really primed very well being a budget radio. So they are prone to rust coming through. And uh, the reason why is because they were sprayed in water to make them rust so they could get the paint to key because they didn't use primer. Uh, it means that if you keep it in a warm, damp place, the rust actually comes through the paint. Uh, this has not happened on this unit. Uh, the only unit it did happen to was the VFO unit, the FV200. And I made some touch-up paint to touch in the rust spots. But apart from that, this rig is in mint condition. There's not a mark on it. Now I'm going to take off my shoulder strap and show you. The case is um, a wraparound louvered case. This is to allow cooling uh, because the valves get hot. On the back I've installed a fan. As you can see I've installed a fan. Uh, this fan uh, runs from a wall wart as we call it which is this power transformer down here. Uh, it's being run on 9 volts so it's not too noisy. Um, the microphone is American Shure 444 Dash Mic. The American triple four dust mic has, if I show you, uh, an aluminium. Uh, is it going to come undone? Has an aluminium element rather than a dynamic element of fifty thousand ohms. The reason why it's fifty thousand ohms is because of the high impedance matching on the ECC eighty three valve, uh, which is what runs the um, the microphone amplifier. Um, the way of lining the radio up, it's what they call um, a plate and loader. It means you have to tune these two controls 
and the mic gain and the grid control to get your power out. Uh, you then switch a meter over to current indication, uh, which is called IC on the meter, which is there. Uh, you peep for minimum dip, maximum power on your 50 ohm dummy load, which is this thing, and your meter, your power meter. Um, when you do that, you then tune the ATU um, for the antenna and you're away. It's not a thing you can learn and do overnight. It's something that does take time. Um, the little bit about um, uh, having spares. It is important to have spare parts. Uh, here we have a complete spare set of valves. Uh, this is a total set of valves, including the output valves. I've got the output valves from the United States, which are these. I had a job to get those. Um, they're the same make, uh, but not from the same guy or woman, because these came from, from America. I had a job to get them from anywhere else, because they're actually quite rare. Most of the small valves are very easy to get hold of. Uh, the only one that's hard to get today is this one, um, if I can find the number. It's known as the 7360 balance modulator tube. That creates the modulation on sidebands. Uh, these valves go, when they go, they're virtually impossible to replace. Um, I've got one new one fitted, because the set has a new set of valves. One second hand one, plus another older one, which is known to be working. The other faults can be with the, with the radio is the transmit and receive relays. Um, these are unattainable. You can only get these for the scrap radio. Now this one is the PTT relay, uh, which has got, as you know, a, a number of pins on. Uh, I think it's 12 pins, plus the coil pins, which are those two. The problem with these is that there's a high voltage across two of the contacts, which tend to burn the surfaces of the contacts. Um, this relay, I was assured, was faulty, um, but with a little bit of bending and cleaning of the tongues, or the... the the um, uh, the um, pr um, how what do you call them the finger the finger contacts the relay was serviced and made to work. This is the voice operating relay, what they call the voice operating transmit relay. Uh, this allows you to talk through the microphone and the wig to key up automatically when you're talking. Um, the other thing that needs to be done when you buy this set is changing of the bulbs and some of the capacitors. In here you'll see some blue capacitors. These are high voltage at 3000 volts. You will need to change the grid blocking capacitor from the 12BY7A to the 6JS6C matching pair. This is due to the other capacitor they use being underweighted. Uh, leads to a short circuit and rapid demise uh, as the full uh, Voltage is put onto the grid of the output valves. Uh, this can cause rapid burnout, overheating, and even has led to destruction of the mains transformer. So, um, being that the set is only protected by one fuse, which is the primary fuse in the transformer, it's very, very easy actually to burn the output valves out if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, the output valves can draw as much as 500 milliamps. They shouldn't be drawing more than 250. Um, um, so it's not a good idea to, um, to do that. The other thing to recognize is if you're not using the radio on the FV200 VFO, which is here, you will need a blanking plug to fit in the back of the set to jumper the connections to run the internal VFO, which is this one. Uh, the set should come with um, a B7G plug. If it doesn't come with that plug, then it will not it will not transmit. Uh, it just won't work. So you need that plug to go into the back. When you have the VFO, it comes with two of these plugs with a wire on each end, uh, which then plug into the VFO unit. Um, the old valves, which are these, most of these are Toshiba. The original set of valves were Toshiba made in Japan. They have a slightly higher gain than the replacements uh, that you get now, uh, you can get from America. Um, 
So what you have to do is you have to substitute some of them for higher gain types. The valve that drives the RF amplifier, the 6BZ6, will need to be changed to a 6, uh, 6D, uh, I think it's called a, I forgot what it is, a 6CD6. Uh, DC6, I can actually see it through the bag there, 6DC6. That is a pin for pin replacement, it would be 6BZ6, but provides more receive. The other thing that is a particular feature with this rig is meter drift. That means you will start the rig and the meter is giving you a three pound signal when there is none. And then the needle after half an hour starts to drift back to the zero and below it. This is because of losses within the valve. Uh, change this 6BA6 for a 6BA6W and that will cure that problem. Um, it's also worth noting that when you buy the radio that you get the original manuals. And they're not easy to get hold of. Uh, they're rarer than actually the radio. Uh, this has the instruction manual and also the manual for the everything else so this is a a, a a second talk of my ft200 1975 i hope this has been helpful 73 is from mexico zero papa romeo foxtrot